Good evening, everyone. Uh, tonight is our August Committee of the Whole meeting where we will be uh, reviewing all the contracts for our September 10th board meeting. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and get started with roll call. Director Decker? I'm here. Director Smith? Here. Director Barrows? Here. And not to be forgotten, Director Zavala? I'm here. <laughs> And I am also here. I'm going to start it off with Dr. Snell uh, for the superintendent report. Thank you, Director Sproul. Um, let me share my screen again. All right. Um, so just a couple of updates before we get into our normal committee of the whole meeting where we're previewing content that we have for the September 10th board meeting. Um, so back to school, the, the normal operations are happening. Lots of communication going out. Uh, the Welcome Center in the Bates um, boardroom has been full, um, I think, uh, up to about 500 new students that were being enrolled. Um, uh, it's awesome over there, just a lot of support, and um, I really appreciate all the staff that work so hard on welcoming um, people into our schools. Um, we are also, the media has reported about our ongoing contract negotiations with Vancouver Education Association, which represents our certificated members. Um, and so um, those have been full day bargaining sessions, uh, continue to make progress. And, uh, you know, it's challenging with um, resources that have been cut and um, needs that are great. And so um, tons of respect for our labor leaders and great appreciation for them and great appreciation for our bargaining team as well. Um, Mr. Blackschmidt on this call is also a part of that, as with others. Um, so um, we're hoping to get that settled sooner than later um, and get, get everybody on track uh, for the school year. Um, just a couple of items that might that aren't on the agenda that we'll look at that could be on the September 10th board meeting that I wanted to call to your attention. Um, August and we're in this, the summer is always a little awkward because we're not into the normal rotation of things. And so our instructional materials committee actually met today. Um, and so they were reviewing some potential um, proposals for your consideration in September. So I, I don't actually have what the proposals are yet. So I'll make sure I get that out to the board. Um, if there is anything that would be on the September 10th agenda for your consideration. I was just looking at our agenda beforehand, and there's something up there. Oh, Sylvia might so. have got it in there since I, yeah. yeah so, um, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, there's something today. there. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and uh, so I'll pull that up when we go through it. And then another one is the board discussed in the workshop a possible resolution uh, about disrupting hate and bias. And the board was uh, given a preview of the training that uh, certificated staff will receive tomorrow. I know that's something that you all discussed um, and we've been working on. So I'll pause and see if there's any comments and questions on that. I think there was a, there was also talk too about perhaps having um, more of a presentation too about the work that the team is doing, um, which I think would be really good context. Just um, you know, if we do want to adopt the resolution at that same meeting, um, I like that idea. Sounds great. Thank you, Director Barrows. Okay, another item that has come up is a unique one. Uh, it's actually a property sale, but it's a property sale for about 278 square feet, um, which is a result of uh, countywide improvements to ADA access. And so they are wanting to purchase part of the Skyview campus um, sidewalk area to make those improvements. Um, and it does take board action, uh, but it's a unique situation. So I just wanted to call it to your attention. If there are questions, I have a, a memo that I can put in uh, with some more context to your briefing, but um, just wanted to raise that. Um, I, I've never had a 278 square foot property sale for board consideration, so um, unique. Uh, and then another, um, at the workshop, the board gave a lot of input on district-wide board level goals for this school year. Um, as a result of the strategic plan. And so uh, staff have taken that feedback and are working on um, refining those goals to better reflect what uh, the board shared. And so we would like to share those with the board um, at that regular meeting as well. Um, also so the public can see those. 
And I would have those to you, um, you know, prior in the agenda so that you could see those and make sure that it, we are on track for that. Um, sometimes we talk more about those in a study session, but given that we would love to start the year with goals and, and the community should know those goals anyway, it just seems like we, you know, spend a lot of time talking about them. So I'd like to deliver those for you on the 10th. And that's, that's all I have for the superintendent report. Um, I'll stop sharing and see if there are any questions about any of that, and then we'll get into the uh, other items. Thank you for all of that. My my one question, um, when you said there's 500 new students enrolling, is that above projections? And you may be uh, yeah, at this point, we don't really know what happens. At, um, for these weeks, we get a lot of new people coming in. We don't necessarily get the people leaving. Um, those typically come when other students are at other welcome centers and other districts, and then the withdrawal process starts. So I think it's always great. Like we, we're glad to welcome a lot of, of students and good news, but it, it takes us a couple of weeks to sort through all that. And um, Brett, is there anything you'd want to add, add to that? No, I think you nailed it. Thank you. All right. So we will, um, those enrollment projections too, will include to the board. I know there's a lot of, um, the board anticipated with the reductions is there's going to be challenges around enrollment, class sizes, caseloads, and you've been asking to review that information. And so as we start to get the enrollments coming in um, and what are the impacts of our projected class sizes versus actual um, in the moment, um, we'll be getting that information to you and then, you know, having to make some decisions around uh, repurposing resources or adding resources, all those things that happen in a normal budget cycle uh, kind of amplified this year because of the reductions in the spring. Yeah, I know that there's some uh, disconnect between like enrollment in some kindergarten classes possibility in some buildings and then like they they have double what they were anticipating and they know that just because of jumpstart and then in other buildings they have half of what they are anticipating so it'll take a while for everything to shake yeah. out and we've actually already made a couple of kindergarten moves because of that because of right. jumpstart those kids come in we know who's there a um, little different than some of the other grade levels um, and so yeah, we've we've adjusted a couple places where just like you described, Kathy, the numbers did not reflect the staffing levels that should be at those schools. So, okay, all right, then I will pull up the agenda and make sure I have the right one here and share that and turn it over to Brett. All right, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Dr. Snell. We have only a half a dozen um, recommendations for contracts or, or um, movement on purchases for you to consider at your September board meetings. So um, several of them are pretty routine. So maybe I'll move through all six of them pretty quickly and then pause for questions afterwards and happy to go back to any of them that may trigger a question or comment. So first one is the annual renewal of our insurance coverages. And this has been something, unfortunately, we've been talking about a lot during our budget um, challenges. And, and as a, a lot of our budget challenges are the results of astronomical increases. Um, well, our insurance coverages are now, premiums have now grown to 5,715,587,000, and that's not including the quake insurance, which we're still waiting for the final premiums on. We estimate, or we, we believe that will be less than 250,000, so the total authority is nearly 6 million, um, inclusive of the quake insurance. Um, so yeah, that will be one that we continue to advocate to legislators um, and others to recognize those astronomical increases in our funding so we don't have to cut services to students to pay for mandatory services like that. Uh, moving on to a contract, a series of contracts with ESD 112. The first one is our recommendation to uh, approve our interlocal agreement for prevention intervention specialists. And this uh, program cost us 72,000 out of our general fund, but it provides services at four different schools, or excuse me, three different schools, Discovery Middle School, McLaughlin Middle School, and Hudson's Bay High School. Um, so they are able to leverage some grant resources on the ESD 112 side to um, 
uh, provide additional bang for our $72,000 of investment into their program. The next CSD contract is for TV, et cetera, and that's a consortium that provides our cable access as well as the opportunity to purchase with some grant subsidies um, equipment for our CTE programs, uh, specifically around video production. And so uh, the cost is uh, $63,931.24 for 2425's renewal. And again, that would be funded out of the general fund. Next item is another interlocal agreement with ESD 112 for printing services. And that will, the final amount will be determined depending on the requests and needs that we have throughout the year. But using previous year's experiences, we estimate that to be $400,000. And that will be ultimately funded primarily by general fund, but occasionally ASB funds have, or ASB programs have some printing requirements that we'll utilize that contract for. Moving on to our second to last contract is a not ESD, but for um, Microsoft infrastructure software, it's purchase agreement 2024-040. And again, as the title or the recommendation suggests, it's our Microsoft licensing for our entire, or our entire network suite of services. Uh, the general fund tech levy specifically will be used to fund this at a cost um, of $305,281.56 plus sales tax. And our last item for your consideration um, is a recommendation to uh, approve a purchase agreement number 2024-041. This is for audits, uh, energy audits specifically as uh, at Skyview and Fort Vancouver High School. Um, Luckily, this is grant funded, so this will be, it'll run through the capital projects fund, but it'll be a net cost to the, uh, to the district of zero. Uh, this is part of a sweeping legislation um, by the Washington legislature a couple of years ago that we required buildings of certain sizes to begin getting audited and then making improvements um, towards these energy use index, our EUIs, that is specified in their statutes. Um, our concern with this is it's complete, other than this grant, it's completely an unfunded mandate and it could, so we're, we're, we're handling this very um, slowly and methodically so that since we have the grant here, we are recommending we go forward with this first round of audits, um, but we're not committing to anything until we have a better understanding of funding and um, scope of service because the audit will likely reveal opportunities to improve certain things. And so we'll, um, we'll see what the audit says and then um, regroup based on what the funding might bear for improvements. So a little bit of a complicated one, but um, as long as the money's there, we're happy to comply with the um, statutory recommendations or requirements. That's all I have. So um, again, I appreciate you letting me go through quickly, but I'm happy to go back and revisit any of them you may have questions or comments on. I have a question about the first one with like the insurance coverages. And I know you've mentioned this before with the increased cost of insurance. And I, I guess I'm not sure. I guess I just wonder, is that... Um, is that kind of just like across the board, whether that's like state or whatever I mean insurance costs are just up I mean is it you know like if you're like with your car insurance or your home insurance you know you're like oh the price has gone up with this company like is there like a shopping around I mean is it like every company that offers insurance is up or I mean just I guess I'm yeah, no, those, that's great questions. Um, we have had a series of conversations with both SIAW and our broker, Biggs Insurance, now known as Alliant Insurance Services. Um, and I think it's a little bit of both. Um, this particular cooperative doesn't weight individual members' experience as much as some other cooperatives and programs might. So in other words, like if you got an offender bender, your car insurance is likely to go up very differently than somebody that isn't. Um, there's an impact on our premiums based on our specific claims and our anticipated exposures. And we have had some unfortunate situations over the last few years that will that have played into this. 
but we believe based on what we've been, how it's been explained, we don't get to see the rate setting and the actuarial assessments of risk. But what's been described is it's really more of a global, not just national, but global trend. Um, and, and again, in some ways we're in the same, we're, not, we're in a very different insurance market than the hurricanes in Florida and the wildfires in California. But there is an impact on those things on any insurance company, and they're they're going to distribute that risk amongst um, all of their. And then la lastly, the other thing. So we have some climate related um, escalations. Our property values have increased or the, the value of our buildings and the cost to replace them has increased. And then lastly, the cost of litigation and settlement of claims is is continuing to climb very dramatically. Um, so it's kind of a perfect storm of it costs more to replace things when they're damaged. Things are getting damaged more often globally and nationally. Um, and then those non-property related claims are getting more and more costly as um, kind of the litigiousness of our society escalates. Okay, thank you. That that makes sense. Doesn't look like any other questions, so thank you, Brett. I appreciate it. Um, I'll walk through the next couple of items. Uh, item D is actually not a policy update. We started this practice of including procedural updates as well, just so that they're in the public record and it's easy for people to see them. Um, so you'll see that there are four procedural updates uh, here, and those are um, uh, listed in detail in the PDF here um, to give you the changes that were made to those. Um, any questions about that? Okay. And then um, finally, this is the, the IMC material report that I hadn't refreshed my, uh, I got too uh, prepared too early. I had it open and then it got updated after I opened it. So um, these are the recommendations from the meeting um, today. And I, I have not had a chance to review them yet. So um, I don't know if there's anything um, that stands out. Often we look at the challenging content. I know is something that at the board level um, that you all that you use as a filter to just make sure if um, there's any concerns in the public. Um, just a quick scan here shows that um, at least the IMC determined that these were not. Oh, it looks like there's one um, down here, a text uh, for fourth 12 supplemental reading, Elvis, me and the lemonade stand. Um, and so you can see in here, um, they will um, list the content uh, in the request form if you want to dig in deeper to that. So uh, that is the IMC report. So that's that's what we have right now uh, with the additional items that I shared in the superintendent report. So I'll uh, throw it back to you, Director Sproul, and anybody else that has questions or comments on the upcoming September meeting. Are there any other questions or concerns or items to be brought forward? Okay, uh, we will adjourn the meeting and see you all in person at the Bates Center in September. Thank you so much.